So we're standing in the exhibition of Ibrahim El Salai, an artist uh, from Sudan, living in Oxford, uh, UK now. He was born in 1930, so he's uh, uh, 93 years old. I got to know his work only five years ago, uh, although he's a master and one of the, as I think, really important figures of the second half of the 20th century. I only got to know it uh, a few years ago and then a couple of months ago, maybe a year ago, I got this announcement by the drawing center in New York that they're showing uh, very small uh, drawings, a selection of uh, 150 drawings approximately. And I thought, okay, this is something I could bring to Kunsthalle Zurich. We're not a museum, we're a Kunsthalle, we don't collect, we're a small structure, but I wanted to bring Ibrahim El Salai's art to Kunsthalle Zurich because it is um, uh, an important work, but it's almost not known here. Only very few people uh, came and said, oh, you're showing Ibrahim El Salai. I'm looking forward to it. No, most people said, you're showing, who is the artist and what is he doing? So I think I'm very, so I'm very proud and very happy to do this show and to bring at least a small, you know, a small nucleus of his work here. Talking about a small nucleus, it's the basic of Ibrahim El Salai's uh, oeuvre and work and art making or one of the bases. He always said he starts from a small nucleus and then he makes it bigger and bigger and bigger. So he's never uh, standing in front of a huge canvas or um, a, a huge paper and then uh, sketches out the lines. Now he de develops it from a small motif and then it grows and grows and grows. This actually goes back to one of his very important experience in his life in 78 when he was put into prison because at that time he was Minister of Culture of Sudan. There was a putsch against the regime and uh, one of his cousins was involved in this putsch and then they thought okay Ibrahim El Salah Salai is part of the, the Putsch uh, gang, put him into prison uh, for six months without any uh, judgment, nothing. Uh, and there it was absolutely forbidden to make any drawings or to write. Nevertheless, he found some uh, uh, pencils and some wrapping paper and in the breaks, in the daily breaks of 20 minutes, he started to do drawings, folded them and put them into the sand. He hid them into the sand because if they would have, if, they if he would have been discovered, he would have gone into uh, um, isolation uh, for 15 uh, days. So that experience of making something and thinking about it, that it could assemble uh, through different sheets of paper into a bigger and bigger work, um, became one uh, way of working for him. Salah, El Salah is a figure of the century, I would say, born in uh, Sudan. He went to Oxford, did learn the European way of painting, came back to Sudan, and that's a, a really interesting, funny experience. Very proud, as he says, uh, having all this knowledge about European art and being able to make perfect portraits and landscape and so on. So he showed his works that he brought back in uh, Sudan, in Khartoum. Nobody came, nobody cared. And then he said, okay, apparently the, the, the art I'm doing is not speaking to my people, to where I come from and where I live. So he started to teach, he started to travel the country and he started to get to know or see what he already knew, which was the culture of uh, Sudan. Uh, the daily, you know, objects, visual elements, but also uh, the, the whole history of it. And he went into, back into calligraphy uh, and developed through lines new forms and motives. He is understood as a representative of this idea of a hybrid uh, art of an art that would combine Northern Africa with the Muslim Arabic Africa with the Black Africa in the South separated by the, the desert is a concept that is um, uh, highly criticized but nevertheless back in the in the days he was seen as somebody who 
and that's also what he wanted to build a bridge between these uh, two big um, uh, huge areas and also this probably is this dream of a harmony within within all the different cultures uh, of Africa. A younger generation then came, and uh, we document this in the exhibition, came and uh, criticized uh, Ibrahim El Salih very much. At the same time, they're also acknowledging, and then you see the debates are absolutely uh, uh, incredible, and I, I, I would wish we would still have this kind of debates in Europe. They also acknowledge that he uh, he set up something they could fight against. He was somebody who's always ready to talk to them, discuss it, uh, take a stand for them. Even he, he maybe didn't agree with them entirely, but he became this um, maybe wise figure or uh, role model for a lot of younger uh, African artists. The group of uh, drawings we see here, 89 uh, drawings, they come from uh, the part of his oeuvre called pain relief drawings. He is in pain, he has Parkinson, he has to take a lot of pills, and then he realized in 2016 that these uh, packages of medicaments are done with really nice, uh, like semi stiff uh, cardboard paper beautiful uh, material, so he unfolded them and then he used uh, pen or ink to make uh, drawings. They're dreamlike uh, drawings sometimes combined with calligraphy and text and sometimes also then he takes, when he uses um, uh, envelopes uh, for uh, sent by the British, uh, the Royal Air Mail, he uses stamps and integrates them into the drawing. So it's, it's you could call it doodling. I mean, that's what I do when I'm, you know, sitting in a meeting and get totally bored. It's obviously not doodle or it's doodle on the highest level, a level I will never ever achieve. So it's a form of, as he says, meditation. And it's the only moment in the day when he forgets the pain. That's why they're called pain relief drawings. Not only because it's packages of pills that take the pain away, but it's actually the the making it, the drawing it, the, the, the lines and the getting lost into lines and, and uh, figures that grow, that, that's where he forgets about his pain. You know, as you probably can see, I'm very passionate and enthusiastic about this work because I think it's, uh, it is not only in each drawing of a whole world, but the whole career of uh, Ibrahim El Salih, El Salih reflects mirrors the world, all the frictions, a lot of the frictions, you know, how the north looks to the south, how colonialism played, um, uh, what, what kind of role colonialism played, what's the exchange between north and south, how do you unlearn a language that you got to learn in the European art school and then you, tr you drop it and, and invent a new language on your own. All these uh, on all levels, uh, these questions and themes and ruptures of the 20th century play into this world. Politics, um, a diplomacy, traveling to Qatar, being a counselor, being a diplomat, being a politician, being an artist, all this plays into this uh, oeuvre. And it's such a rich uh, life, it's such a rich biography that also produced such a rich work of uh, an, an oeuvre. It's very, very rare, I would say, and it is something that everybody uh, should be, uh, should discover and, and, and be aware of. It's, um, he deserves a lot more attention than he actually gets.